COVID recurrent wave is on the rampage across the globe. Hospitals are overwhelmed and resources crumbling everywhere. COVID is mild in 99% of cases and life threatening in those unfortunate 1%. Why COVID is so dangerous? How it attacks our body? How it kills people? And most importantly, how we can treat those serious cases? Let's discuss in this video. Today we have with us two well-known COVID experts, Dr. Srinivas Kakilaya and Dr. Bala Saraswati, who have treated hundreds of COVID patients with good outcome. Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Arun Naik. I am a neurosurgeon and a health blogger. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to DocLogs. Friends, bear with me. This may be a little longer video and we need to cover many aspects of COVID illness. Let's know briefly what happens when virus enters our body. When a healthy person inhales COVID droplets from an infected person, the virus enters the nose and throat. It finds a perfect home in the lining of the nose. Nasal mucosal cells are rich in a cell surface receptor called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2 receptor. ACE2 receptors are seen in many organs like lungs, heart and kidney. The COVID virus requires that receptor to enter a cell. This receptor in a way is a gateway to COVID virus. Once inside, the virus attacks the cell's machinery, making millions of copies of itself and invading new cells. If our body's immune system doesn't kill the virus during this phase, the virus then runs down the windpipe to attack the lungs, where it can create havoc. The main residence of coronavirus is in the tiny air sacs called alveolus, which is lined by a single layer of cells that are also rich in those S2 receptors. Normally, oxygen crosses the alveoli into the capillaries, those tiny blood vessels that lie next to the air sacs. The oxygen is then carried to the rest of the body. This is the normal gas exchange system happening in our lungs. But this alveolar system turns a battleground for virus and our body's immune system. And in the bargain, gas exchange suffers and patient battles for his breath. Frontline soldiers in the battleground are our white blood cells that release inflammatory molecules called cytokines, which in turn recruit more immune cells that target and kill virus infected cells, leaving a messy concoction of virus, fluid and dead cells along with pus. This leads to pneumonia with its classical symptoms of coughing, fever and rapid shallow respiration. Some COVID-19 patients recover sometimes with just oxygen through the nasal prongs whereas many other unfortunate ones they succumb to the pneumonia. There are mainly four causes of death in any COVID patients. Number one, acute respiratory failure due to lung involvement. Here, there is no gas exchange taking place and their oxygen levels plummet and they end up on a ventilator and many of them, they die. Number two, cytokine storm. Cytokine storm kills many patients. It's basically an overreaction of our normal immune system. Cytokines are signaling molecules that guide a healthy immune response against any infection. But in a cytokine storm, the levels of certain cytokines raise to dangerous levels and immune cells start to attack normal healthy tissues. Blood vessels leak, blood pressure drops, clot form in multiple organs resulting in the third cause, catastrophic multi-organ failure. This kills hundreds of patients. Lastly, number four, notorious blood clot formation in vital organs like heart and brain causing heart attack and brain stroke. With that brief intro into the serious COVID illness, 
let me bring in Dr. Srinivas Kakilayanav and let's listen what he has to say regarding the serious COVID illness and how to treat it. Coronavirus disease or COVID has uh, two parts of it. The first part is where the virus enters the throat and the nose and uh, the immune system starts attacking the virus. In more than 99% of the cases or almost everyone, the immune system is able to clear the virus and the disease abates, the symptoms come down uh, in about uh, 4 to 5 days. But in uh, very few patients, less than uh, 1%, the immune uh, response itself starts damaging the body's organs, particularly the lungs, causing a decrease in oxygenation and uh, decrease in blood oxygen levels, and sometimes triggering clotting of blood and resulting in heart attacks, strokes, so on and so forth. So the treatment also would have to be directed at these two components of the illness. The first part, as I said, is taken care of by the body's immune system itself. In almost everybody, the viruses are cleared. So really there is not much of a role for any agent to reduce the viral replication or to control this part of the illness. And there are no such medicines also available as of now, except uh, some synthetic antibodies which have been developed in the US, they are not available here, or plasma uh, from a donor who has already suffered from the illness. That would uh, stop the virus from binding to the human cells only if it is used, as I said, in the very early stage of the illness where uh, it is not possible because most of the people will have mild symptoms and uh, it will disappear. So therefore, use of plasma in the later stages of the disease or as I said, the second phase of the disease will really not do uh, any good to the patient. Now, there is one drug which is being widely now prescribed and widely in the news is Remdesivir. Remdesivir, although supposedly reduces the replication of the virus, it is now, after all the studies that have been done, particularly the solidarity trial done by the World Health Organization, it's now very, very clear and the WHO also has made it categorically clear that Remdesivir doesn't offer any benefit to patients of COVID. Even if it is to be used, it has to be used in the first four, five days of the illness and uh, not later than 10 days. That means the whole course of Remdesivir should be finished between five and 10 days, not later than that. So therefore, most of the patients, uh, when they reach the hospital, it's after the t uh, 10th day or 11th day. So therefore, practically, Remdesivir is of absolutely no use in any patient. So therefore, uh, I would suggest that nobody should run behind Remdesivir and uh, waste their money on that particular drug. Now, coming to the second part of the uh, COVID, that is when the body's immune system itself causes uh, hyperinflammation, damages the lungs, etc. So in this situation, Two drugs are found to be useful and of proven benefit and these are now being used in seriously ill cases all over the world. One such is steroid called dexamethasone or other steroids like hydrocortisone or prednisolone. Uh, these are to be given under medical supervision uh, after monitoring blood glucose and other uh, body parameters. So that will have some benefit uh, in most of the patients who have very serious illness. At the same time, steroids should never be used in patients who have very mild illness or in the initial stages where it can do more harm. The other drug which is of some benefit is drugs that prevent blood clotting, heparin and low molecular weight heparin. These are also to be used for patients who are admitted in the hospital under medical supervision. Apart from these two drugs, there are no other medicines which would help uh, COVID cases. Now very recently, in fact yesterday, a study has been published about tocilizumab. Uh, it has very very marginal benefit in some selected patients. So therefore, uh, if somebody is not able to afford uh, tocilizumab or it's not available, there is no need to panic. So most of the patients who land up in the second phase of the illness can still be managed with very good support of oxygen and later on if they deteriorate further, like non-rebreathable mask or high flow oxygen mask or if the situation arises, ventilation and other life-saving supporting care. Thank you Dr. Kakilaya. You have lucidly explained the severe COVID illness and also told us which treatment works and which doesn't. Let me bring in now friends, Dr. Bala Saraswati who has done a lot of work in metabolic diseases and lifestyle factors 
are very important in fighting this virus or any infection for that matter. Let's see what she has to say. Following infection, this coronavirus uses ACE2 receptors as gate to enter the cells of our various organs in our body. ACE2 receptors have an important role in glucose metabolism by promoting insulin secretion. It also helps in keeping our blood vessels open for free unobstructed blood flow and has got anti-inflammatory property. It is our body's own protective mechanism and in people with insulin fatigue, it is therefore in excess as a defense. Unfortunately, coronavirus by hijacking this ACE2 receptors worsens insulin fatigue leading to aggravation of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, coronary artery disease and precipitates heart attack and strokes. Moreover, individuals with insulin fatigue and obesity are already in a state of chronic inflammation and corona infection adds to the inflammation leading to the well-known cytokine storm damaging multiple organs. Lastly, stress out of panic leads to increased nervous system activity causing further insulin fatigue, hyperglycemia and hypoxia through increased cortisol and adrenaline. In nutshell, coronavirus infection and our metabolic makeup or our personality becomes a deadly combo leading to catastrophe. Keeping all these underlying factors in mind, the best way to encounter the virus and prevent worst outcome would be the following measures. First, include physical activity to improve insulin sensitivity, oxygenation of the lungs and release of endorphins that will boost our immunity. Most importantly, avoid sugars, fruits, beverages, processed fast foods and deep fried foods which are pro-inflammatory and leads to insulin fatigue. Sleep for 7 to 8 hours a day to boost immunity. Eat low glycemic whole grain traditional food, vegetables, nuts, eggs, chicken, fish. Take lots of fluids in the form of warm lemon water with salt, of course without sugar, hot soups frequently. Keep a gap of 3 to 4 hours between feeding. Relax by listening to music, reading books, think positive and be positive. These general measures, which of course are very important measures other than the medicines to recover from COVID because we as of today do not have specific drugs against this virus. With that friends, we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching and hope you found this video helpful. I thank both my guests today, Dr. Kakilaya and Dr. Balasaraswati for coming here and talking to us. Knowledge should be shared friends. Share this video with all your social media circles so that everyone else is also benefited. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to Doc Logs. Friends, I'll be back with another equally interesting Doc Log very soon. Till then, feel awesome, live awesome and take good care of your health. And be safe.